What exactly is the Force? I've got a bad feeling about this. The release of Rogue One shattered the box office in 2016, and definitely did pretty well regarding reviews. One of the characters fans have been most interested in is Trut Imwe, a blind man who claims to be strong with the Force. We're not really sure in the end if Trut used the Force at all, but we'd like to think he did. But that got us thinking, what exactly is the Force? In Star Wars, the Force is often described as a universal energy that unites everything in the known galaxy. This might sound like a fairly vague statement. But really, it isn't. In fact, it might just tell us all we need to know to truly understand the Force. If the Force is something that moves and flows through all living things, it can easily be stated that not only does the Force simply exist within a universe, but living things are subject to it. But let's take this back a step. What kind of energy unites and binds an entire universe? I mean, that's a lot of space to cover. Possibly infinite amounts of it. Well, there are a few ideas that exist that could potentially explain the Force. There are a vast range of possibilities from outright magic to dimensional energy. That, however, is a possibility worth noting. Similar to how we're able to use properties of the second dimension, it's possible that the Force is an unseen property from the fourth dimension. If you want to know more about dimensions, click here for a video I did that talks more in depth about them. For this, we'll just do a quick breakdown. We all exist in the third dimension, which contains the properties of height, width, and depth. If the second dimension, a theoretical reality separate from our own, would contain the properties of only width and height, and the first dimension would contain only length. Many actually theorize that the fourth dimension, if it does exist, contains a property relative to the concept of space-time. Space-time, in this case, would be something similar to what you would imagine a universe to be made out of. If the universe were a piece of paper, then space-time is, itself, the physical makeup of the paper. It can be bent, folded, and moved, which could easily explain how the Force can manipulate objects and beings. However, while space-time would certainly be present in the fourth dimension, it is only so because it seems to exist within our own. Space-time seems very real, a physical manifestation of time and the way the ocean of the universe moves. If one could pull around space-time, they wouldn't need to access the fourth dimension for it, or any other dimension than our own for that matter. In fact, not only does space-time fit the qualifications of the Force, it also has ways of being manipulated like it. It is noted in Star Wars that there is a living force which is given off by living things that feeds into the cosmic force. We think it's safe to say that the cosmic force is the space-time we talked about, while the living force is something else. What is that, you may ask? Gravity. It's widely theorized that gravity is the key to bending space-time, and looking at space itself, we can actually see evidence of that. Jeremy, do you know why moons orbit planets and why planets orbit stars? Sure do. Again, the answer is gravity, but maybe not in ways you're familiar with. See, an object as big as a moon, star, or planet gives off a big gravitational field. Take Earth for instance. The Earth's gravitational field, as seen here, may actually be bending the space-time around Earth.
The moon orbits the Earth because it's actually rolling around the bend that this gravity has created. The same goes for how the Earth orbits the Sun. In fact, planets, moons, and stars rotate likely because of this phenomenon. Now, what does this have to do with the force? Well, like you said, gravity seems to have the ability to bend space-time. And, as you also said, objects give off their own gravitational field, even if it's just a small one. So, look at it like this. All beings give off their own gravity, and all that gravity accumulates into space-time, allowing the larger object to manipulate space-time using their gravity. That sure does sound a lot like how Star Wars described the living and cosmic force, huh? It certainly does. And actually, there's some evidence within Star Wars to back up our theory. You remember in A New Hope, when the Millennium Falcon got pulled toward the Death Star because of the Death Star's tractor beam? What if we told you that this tractor beam was really the Death Star's gravitational field, perhaps concentrated? Interesting, isn't it? I mean, you can't even see the tractor beam that's pulling them in. You know what else pulls constantly but can't be observed? Gravity. Also, the force. Anyone else seeing the connection here? Even lightsabers could be an example of space-time and the force being the same thing. Scientifically speaking, and making a long story short, the beam of a real lightsaber would be extremely difficult to contain. In Star Wars, lightsabers are powered by kyber crystals, stones allegedly powerful with the force. Well, what if we told you that these crystals are special, albeit fictional, high-mass stones? If their mass was large enough, they could emit their own gravity, and this gravity could be manipulated to control space-time around the beam of the lightsaber, keeping it from, well, doing a few undesired things. Like what? Not really sure. I'd assume that it has something to do with plasma exploding in someone's face. Doesn't sound fun. No, it does not. So, that's our theory on how the force may actually be space-time, and how it could easily be manipulated, just like in the movies. We hope you enjoyed watching, make sure to go check out Jeremy's channel, Square Physics. There you'll find a ton of interesting content, along with another video that we've done together. Thanks for watching!